Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What up? It's higher learning. It is I, Van <laughs> Lathan. Why do you sound exhausted? It is I, Rachel Lindsay. You good? You okay? I'll tell you why I sound exhausted. Because okay. <clears throat> it's, it's frantic right now. I'm late for the podcast, you guys, by 30 minutes. Okay? I'm late for the podcast by 30 minutes. And you didn't have to go to the doctor this time. Just, I didn't have just, to go to the doctor okay. this time. Like, I got up this morning and I was feeling good. And I decided I would go shoot basketball. I found this I great basketball. I knew ba- that's what you were doing <laughs> in, in my soul. I was like, he is on the court. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you look at me right now, this shirt is sweaty. So <clears throat> I was out. So listen, I decided I'm going to go shoot basketball, right? I'm going to go shoot basketball because, and I found this. I'm not even going to tell people where it is because it's a hidden gym. It's a hidden gym. It's a basketball court that's like in this really nice neighborhood, but it's at like the bottom of a mountain almost. Oh. And it's like a really... How'd you find this? Uh, well, some of my friends, we have this uh, kind of uh, thing where we go shoot basketball every now and again, just social distance, rebounding and all of that stuff like that. We had to. Uh, but like this court, nobody uses it, but it's like in this really nice neighborhood, but like in this wilderness, but it's a court. It's a, like a mm. real basketball court. So, you know, nobody's ever there. So I go there and I shoot. Let me tell you how we were supposed to shoot this podcast. This was supposed to have done because listen, just to let you guys know very seriously, Rachel's very busy. <clears throat> Rachel's very busy. And so we have to shoot this podcast because Rachel is doing Ghosted and she's hosting the Emmys. And the Academy Stop. Awards. This is my lunch break right now. I am podcasting through my lunch break and have to go back to filming Ghosted. I'm see, so I'm, I'm, I'm serious. dedicated she's very, to the podcast. She's super dedicated to this one of her seventeen thousand jobs. <laughs> um, so I do apologize about being late, but let me tell you the only reason why I left the basketball court. When you're shooting on that court, there is absolutely no service. Yeah. So I would not have been able to have seen any messages. I was shooting there. And a coyote came down there. Stop. I promise. I was shooting there, we- shooting around, and a coyote ran by. And I was like, you know what? It is time to get the fuck away from here. Now, the coyote didn't even look at me. He kind of just glanced at me and then ran by, scared the shit out of me. Coyote. Nobody's going to go ran. to that court. You might as well tell everybody where it is. That's, why, that's probably why nobody was there. Coyotes well, there was one guy there. Well, there was one guy there when I got there. One guy. And he had a little dog with him. So maybe the coyote smelled the dog or something. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Or you. And so then I, I leave because the coyote's there. And then I see, hey, it's time to shoot higher learning with Van Lathan and Rachel Lindsay. I'm like, oh, shit, it's 1230. So without that coyote, we probably don't get to do the podcast. It was God. God was in the form of that Nothing coyote but. going, Van, go get it done. That's wild, man. I don't know what I would do if the coyote was there. Like, do coyotes attack people or just animals? Are they scared of us? Are they that type of animal? They're they're normally not going to attack you unless uh, they're in a pack. It's very rare that a coyote attacks. But like, a lone coyote is a coward. They're but like see, white that's supremacists. The thing. How do you not know the pack isn't a few steps behind? Like, that's what would terrify me. Coyotes are like white supremacists. One coyote, you don't have to worry about it. but. 10, 15 coyotes. Now you're like, ah, I might be fucked up. But no, but like, you, you'll see them. You'll see them. They'll be like, every once in a while, you'll see a random coyote running around LA. I, see, I would probably think it was just a, like a skinny dog. No, you'll know. Would I? Yeah, he looks wild. He looks, he looks wild. <laughs> yeah, he looks disenfranchised. The coyote looks, okay. he looks disenfranchised. He looks like he's on his own. Because you see a dog, a dog is happy. A dog is like, shit, man, I'm dogging it up. I'm mean, going to think about Copper. Copper goes around, oh. he plays, right? And then Copper comes back. He goes, you know, when I come back here, I know I'm going to have a mom and a dad. Coyote doesn't have that. Coyote has nothing. <laughs> He's got a pack. He's got a pack. <laughs> um, so, did you watch the town hall featuring? We're going to start off. We're going to start this episode off going right there. Uh, President Donald Trump, did you watch the president... Uh, on his town hall with uh, one of my favorite guys, George Stephanopoulos. Oh, really? I like George Stephanopoulos. I know. I like him a lot. I like him a lot. Really nice guy. Um, Here's the thing. I purposely didn't watch it because Mm. I felt like at this point, we know who Trump is. We know what we're going to get. 
it's going to be a lot of lies and misinformation. And so I just thought, why would I even subject myself to that when I can catch the highlights later? I knew I would get frustrated. I knew I would get upset. And from reading everything the next day, it's exactly what I thought it was. Did you watch it? Uh, no, I didn't. I, I didn't. I don't watch anything that has to do with President Trump. And by the way, I don't also I also don't follow President Trump on Twitter. And if, at this point, if no, you're following no. President Trump on Twitter, I wonder why you're doing it. Like, there's almost zero reason to follow him. There's there's not any piece of information that he's going to tweet that is going to be uh, usable. It's essentially signing up for a propaganda delivery service if you're following President Trump on Twitter. This is a weird thing. But I do think that there is something interesting to discuss. Uh, like obviously, several lies were told um, <laughs> during this entire thing. There's actually one point, I think, where he criticized Vice President Biden for not doing more uh, <laughs> yeah. To combat the coronavirus. Yeah. Now I want I want to let you guys know. Joe Biden, private citizen. Right. Joe Biden doesn't have anything to do with stopping the coronavirus or a coronavirus response. I, what would anyone want Joe Biden to do in response? All he can give is coronavirus pep talks. All he can say <laughs> is wear a mask. So did you understand that what Trump was talking about when he said that? No, he blamed him for the lack of a national mask mandate. What, the fuck? what power does Joe Biden have? It's like, did you this this? And I don't know how how Republicans or whoever may support Trump. I don't know how you can defend that. How can you sit there and say and blame it? This is what he said. He said, in addition to that, for blaming him for a lack of national mask mandate, he said, quote, a lot of people think the masks are not good. At different points, he downplayed the virus and said he had upplayed it. This is after he was Uplated. just on tape last week that came out with the Woodward tape saying he downplayed it. What is wrong with this man? <laughs> what is wrong? Upplay. We have a president that would use the term upplay. <laughs> um, so, but there, there are two interesting questions besides anything that has to do with President Trump. It's so boring to even talk about President Trump right now. Uh, but there are two interesting things that I think, you know, you can spin out of the town hall. Um, the first is President Trump's response to uh, George's questions about police violence against African Americans. What he says is basically cops are good, but you have a couple of chokers. Okay. And the reason why I think that's something that's important, when he said chokers, he meant a couple of guys that are in a situation, they react poorly. All right. I think that's very important to discuss that idea because without knowing straight up, I would imagine that it's probably a lot of Americans that feel like that, right? That these, right. that there are a lot of police interactions and in these police interactions, you're bound to get a couple of them wrong to where things go horribly left. Yeah, uh, A couple of guys are going to get it wrong. They're going to choke on the job. They're going to be, you know, something's going to be in front of them and they're not going to know what to do. Mm -hmm. So, it, here's the issue with that. And... <laughs> in the way that I see it. For, for me, when you, when you look at that, there's one thing that's uniform about police violence against Black Americans. The one thing that's uniform about it is its regularity. It yeah. doesn't happen infrequently enough for these incidents to be systemically isolated, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's not like every two, three, four, five years one guy who some kind of some kind of a way slipped through the cracks has a bad day on the job and somebody ends up dead. Right. It happens so frequently that number one, it makes you wonder how frequently it's really happening, mm -hmm. uh, violence against black people. And it happens in all different parts of America. Yeah. California, Colorado, Louisiana, New York, Florida, uh, you know, Georgia. Uh, Kentucky, wherever, you know, Minnesota. Texas. Mm. So it, it, I'm wondering, people who believe that, and I'm, I'll be interested to hear from the people who believe that, if they don't think that there's something uniform in the dysfunction of policing, what would, what would have to happen to make them believe that that was a, a fact? I'll, pl I'll play devil's advocate because this is what somebody would say. They would look 
at the bigger picture and they would say all these policemen that are in all these different cities and counties and states, all the people, the millions and millions of people that live in the United States, these are a few, and I want everybody to know this is not what I believe. These are a few incidents compared to the larger, the bigger picture in the grand scheme of things. That's what they would say. And it would go into that thought feeds their argument of, well, yes, we all agree there's some bad apples. But when you look at the numbers and statistically, they're not all bad. Majority of them are good. That's how they defend it. That's how they look at it. Because President Trump has even said, yeah, we've got some bad ones. But in the grand scheme of it all, police officers are good. The numbers would be higher. That's what they would say. And what I would say to that uh, is it, I would ask how you define good. Mm. If you sit, I, I would say if you mean good, meaning haven't, they haven't done harm. <laughs> That's exactly what they mean. <laughs> okay. If you, then I'd say that what needs to happen is our redefinition of a good police officer. Yep. A good police officer is somebody you can lean on for public safety, somebody that you can lean on to take care of and not do harm to a community, right? A good police officer shouldn't be a police officer that just hasn't fucked up yet. I want to add on to your definition of good in the sense that I I was talking to a friend and she was saying how she's conflicted because she has police officers in her family and the new family that she married into. Her father-in-law was a police officer for 35 plus years and she was like, he never shot at anyone. And I said, so this is me adding to your definition of what is a good cop. It's not just somebody who hasn't messed up. It's also somebody or a good cop is somebody who you might be, you might have not, I'll use the example of my friend's father-in-law. You might have never shot at anyone. You might have never pulled the trigger. You never killed anyone uh, unjustly. But are you on the force with people that you know that have done something that is wrong? That is unjust, you know? And you sat silent because there's a code. It's a fraternity, sorority, whatever. Well, there's women too, but it's a, it's a group of you. There's this code to not speak out. That makes you a bad one. So like being good is also calling out bad when you see it. And I don't think people gather that. Yeah, I had a conversation with, with Austin Rivers when, uh, shout out to Austin Rivers and shout out to the, the grit and the determination that the Houston Rockets showed. Uh, in the in the in the in the NBA playoffs, you know, I've never seen a grittier a team that wanted to win more than Houston. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but uh, man, they don't care about me. James Harden somewhere like this right now, like yeah, uh, you know, at a drive-through, bring Diamond out. Like I'm gonna go ahead and, and throw some dollars at her while I'm in my Maybach or something. In his um, Blue Lives Matter mask. Uh, right, uh, but. <laughs> I was talking to I was talking to um to Austin. We were on Instagram Live, and Austin goes, "Well, I know good cops. I know good cops. You know, uh, good cops in my family. Good cops all over the place. I get it." And then I said to him, "I said, let's say you're. I said you're on a basketball team, right? You got twelve guys on the basketball t- basketball team." He goes, "Yeah." I go, "Let's say one of the guys on the basketball team is abusing children. Only one, but everybody knows, mm-hmm. and no one's doing anything about mm-hmm. it. How many good guys are on the basketball team? The answer is zero. As citizens of the United States of America, black people are demanding that our lives not be ended by the state uh, when we are not posing an immediate threat. We, we, we're demanding public safety. We're demanding our lives not be ended by the state, period. Anything short of that is them placating us. Mm-hmm. So I think it's very important that when President Trump says things like that, that we put those into context and how he's actually speaking for uh, a large swath of Americans who... Yep are in lockstep with that belief. Which mm-hmm. brings me to my second thing. You do interviews every day. What do you feel like is the responsibility of a guy like Stephanopoulos? Like, hmm. I'm noticing that Trump is putting these things out and he's saying these things that George, I'm sure, knows to be untrue. At some point, if you if you care about delivering accurate facts uh, to people, don't you have to, despite the fact that he's the president, jump in and say, yo, man, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, right. what's going on with you? This is untrue. Yeah. 
I think that there is a way, having recently been in a situation with Donald Trump Jr., I think there is a way that, because I get it, I get the battle of you have to be professional. You're not, you're not an attorney. You're not, you're not debating. You are there to moderate and navigate a conversation in, in regards to George Stephanopoulos. So I understand the conflict. However, I remember when I talked to Extra, I said, I'm not going to be able to do this interview if he says something and I at least can't respond with a fact. You know, so our interview was over 30 minutes and it was supposed to be 15. So there was a lot people didn't see. But I couldn't sit there and let you say something that was not true without at least responding with a fact into a question. You, do you know what I mean? Like there's a way to challenge somebody in the question and restate it, like put the facts within in the question. And I think that's what George should have done. I mean, especially like ludicrous comments, like, like saying Joe Biden is the reason we don't have a national mask mandate. You can't, you can't say stuff like that because there are people who don't go out here, do their own research and take everything that a person who has the office of the president of the United States as true. Because why would my president lie to me? That's what people think. You know, why would he? We've never seen anything like this before. We've seen them lie, but not like this. Yeah. Also, when th there's something about the, the Trump supporters right now are actually not a political group or a political faction. They yeah, are- Yeah, it's a cult. A religion. So, um, and by the way, it's important to be able to recognize that because you don't want to be that. Like, mm. you do not want to be in the religion of the Democrats or the religion, the church of the Republicans. You do not want to be in either church. You don't. Yeah. You want to be able to caucus with people. You want to be able to fellowship with them or share ideas with them, but you do not want to be in anybody's church. These aren't churches. These are political parties. I happen to believe that a guy climbed up on a cross, right, and gave his life for me, and I'm going to hang out with him forever uh, at some point. That's as crazy as my belief system goes. I don't go past <laughs> that. All right? So that's the, that's the level of it right there. So I can't believe... In dudes that like everything that comes out of Trump's mouth is gospel. Everything that comes out of Biden's mouth is gospel. If you're going to be an engaged American citizen, you have got to cut around the edges, man. You have mm -hmm. got to really hold these people intellectually uh, accountable for the things that they say. There's no other way to do it. Like, and and if and, and you're doing yourself and your community a disservice. If you start listening to the uh, the evangelism of either side, mm -hmm. either side, uh, got bad news. What? It's over. For Cardi B and Offset. Are you waiting for me to be shocked? Oh, I'm waiting for you to <laughs> to be to be upset because this, this was this was like so. I wouldn't say that hip hop that that Cardi B and Offset were hip hop's first couple. It's obviously hip hop's first couple. Uh, don't look oh. at that. There is certainly, you think, there is certainly a demo where Cardi B and Offset are hip hop's first couple. Are we forgetting about Jay Z and Beyonce? I'm telling you that. I don't think they're that far removed from the next generation. To a lot of fans, Cardi B and Offset. Yikes. Are, to guys. a lot of fans, Cardi B and Offset are hip hop, <laughs> hip hop's first couple over Jay Z and Beyonce. There's a, you don't think that's true? I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna argue. I was, I was shocked. I mean, you guys, come on now, we got to do better. No, I, I mean, they weren't, they weren't it for me. I didn't even look at them like that. I guess. Am, listen, are we shocked that Cardi B and Offset, or as Billy said today on set, the Offset? <laughs> are we are we shocked that they're not together uh, i am a no. little bit are you sad no, by the way come on copper saw this coming it's a ma but it's a marriage breaking up you're not sad about that that it's a marriage it's a union you know of people I, that broke up no i'm i i i, I want to see people like at the end of the day obviously i went on the bachelor i'm a hopeless romantic at the end of the day but there was so much surrounding that relationship, this isn't, that it's being rumored that he has fathered a child with someone else, even though Cardi B's camp has come out and said, said that no. that is absolutely not true. Mm -hmm. um, there have been 
accusations of infidelity. Cardi B has admitted that, and or maybe Offset admitted it. One of the two of them have said, admitted that he was unfaithful in their marriage. Uh, it's happened more than once, I believe, is what's come out. So I just feel like it was going to happen. At some point, she you're kept, just like, fuck it. I, I just... I'm, I'm never going to be, okay, and maybe this is a question we could talk about or it's a topic we could talk about. I believe that if you cheat, I don't necessarily believe once a cheater, always a cheater. I don't actually believe that. I can understand, especially when there are children involved, I can understand why you would forgive. Maybe there were other issues going on. Like, I get it. I'm not saying that I could do it, but I totally understand When it. you say other issues, what's one of the, uh, what's a, give me an example of an other issue that you think would make cheating, that you could forgive it? If there's another issue out there. I, I don't know if I could, but, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe when the whole D. Wade and Gabrielle Union, you know, situation came to light and he had fathered another child while they were together. Well, they were, I, uh, uh, well, hold on, wait. They say it was a break. They say it was a break. Okay, I've actually been in that relationship too where my dude said it was a break too. I want to also say that's the wait, one, wait, one who goes to He me. said it was a break and you didn't agree to the break? It that, was a that, break, but I think that, that they were always G. messing around. Now, I, you like, didn't just what, happen to mess around that that's one time. That's crazy. Like, if you, like, you just gave a lot of guys out there something that they could use. The one-sided wait, break. What? Your dude said it was on a break and then he didn't come to you and get. he just said, hey, we were on a break. No, no, no. no. We were on a break. My, I'm saying, I admit that as well. I just don't think that that was the one time that you stepped out during that month that we weren't talking. I think you were, were messing around before as well. Probably after too. Anyways, I believe Gabrielle Union came out and said that she takes some fault into the reason as to why he cheated. I believe she said that. She talked about being busy. She was never there for him. Uh, I guess when he needed her. And so she felt she took some of the blame. And people were upset that she said that. So that's, I'm giving an example of some, that's something someone else said. I don't agree with that. Right. But that okay. is that is what so she So you're said. saying there could be issues that, have, that, but Cardi B, oh look, I think that, I think this is different for every couple, right? I think every, every couple has to, I know people, I know guys that, left girls because they said that the ladies weren't attentive enough and stuff. So every couple has whatever their breaking point is. Uh, I do. <laughs> I feel like this, like people with status say that. Well, maybe. Like every couple has their breaking point. What I'm wondering is because they had been through this before, if there was an ultimatum that was put down, if there was a situation, I'm not going to lie. Right now, I have to, I have to right now, I don't know. It's how you position your hand. The diamond ring is shining. As we talk about this, the diamond ring on your... It's almost like the diamond ring on your finger. When you guys are watching the video, I as we're it. talking I about... See you see it? The mm -hmm. diamond ring is like, not here, nigga. Ain't gonna be no <laughs> marriage problems here. Boy, that's so crazy. And you know what? We have this. the same shaped ring. Now, hers has m m many more carrots than mine, but... but. Y'all gotta watch this on the video. We're talking about infidelity and her ring activated, Brian put a hex on the ring. No, I was going to say first it was the coyote, then it was the diamond ring. And then it was the diamond ring. The ring is going, no, like we good over here. You got it. That was crazy. <laughs> the ring is like, you ever see the Thundercats? Like the eye of Thundera, when, whenever he goes, thunder, thunder, and, and everybody wakes up, the ring is like, <laughs> relationship power activated. Um, oh. But no, it's, it's, it's interesting because I, I do... Anytime there's a relationship that breaks up, I kind of get sad because I want to see somebody's relationship. I want to see old Cardi B and Offset tattoos all over their body. I want to see her twerking on him at 55 in the French Riviera. I want to see it work. And it's just, I it's like hard, man, when they break up. But what if it's toxic, right? I, I agree with you. I think there was an ultimatum, which is why I think the rumors that he fathered another child, I think that's what could have done it, right? We know he's cheated. He's cheated again. What could take it to another level? I also think that when you keep taking your man back after he cheats on you, he's going to know that he can continue to get mm. away with it because you're just going to keep taking him back. I, I strongly believe that. Oh, so I could do this again. She's going to take me back. I'll just buy another Birkin. Or a whatever Birkin. He was is a Birkin buying. worth it? Is a Birkin worth a baby? I think those bags are so ugly. You don't like them. I don't but like do you them. see I don't how there it. could be women out there who think, oh, a Birkin, a baby. If you have oh, a baby, 100%. get a Birkin. 
A hundred percent. Just scroll hashtag Birkin. Mm. Um, to, I, I'm interested in this as, as the way women look at this. This is interesting. So, well, the first thing I wonder, and I'm, I'm wondering this, I'm putting this out as an overall question to everyone. Um, Because, you know, there are babies that get had on people and stuff like that. So everybody's just fucking raw. So you're having sex with somebody outside and you're just fucking raw. You're not using, you just, and not only are you fucking raw, you're just busting back. A lot of men don't. This is a thing. Yeah. Just raw. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. I just know, I would think that if like, if you're offset or a big basketball player... You know that the worst case scenario in a situation like that is, I mean, besides obviously the infidelity, is you get somebody pregnant. I just don't see how that keeps happening over and over and over again. Because they're not the smartest people <laughs> in the world. Mm. <laughs> and from what I'm told, it's the question is, do you have, are you on the pill before any type of protecting themselves? Oh, you're on the pill? Okay, okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Are you on the pill? What do you think? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, I'm on a pill. Go ahead. Give me the, the million-dollar insurance policy. I am sad for her. Why I does am, it keep I am, happening? I, I am sad for the couple. I'm sad, uh, I'm sad for, for the baby. I'm sad. I'm sad for the baby. It's 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 a situation to where, look, they had been back and forth. Everybody has their breaking point, their limit. Um, but you you wish that they could have found out a way uh to to stay together. I wish she could have stopped cheating on her. That's what I wish. I wish that as well. For Cardi. For Cardi. I wish. I like Cardi. And I, I wish like Cardi off- too. I wish The Offset could have stopped cheating on her. The Offset. You know <laughs> what? It, it's So my parents divorced in 2002. Mm-hmm. So it's me, my mother, my sister, uh, and my dad, right? That was the four family unit, right? That was the people that were all in the house together. Do you know that since my parents divorced in 2002, the four of us have not all been in a room together? Really? In eight, years. We have not, the four of us, mother, father, sister, brother, have not been in a room together all at the same time in 18 years. And it is, you know, there are all kinds of reasons why relationships break up, but you you also don't think about the reasons why when relationships break up, man, families break up. A family breaking up is something that stays with you. Mm-hmm. You know, a family, when the family breaks yeah. up, that's something that weighs on you. You think, yo, we used to have, it's not that my parents used to be married, it's that we used to have a family. Mm-hmm. And we don't have a family anymore. Mm-hmm. That's so, why I say you the know, kids, the kids. Which is also why I understand why people take, you know, men or a woman, whoever is the one who cheats. I, I understand why you take them back when there are kids involved because of the family unit. I get it. By the way, I made a proclamation earlier on this podcast that there was somebody that I would never talk about again. It's getting hard. Just to let you guys know. Oh, no, we're not going to do this. Do we if need you, to do we're this? We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. Okay. It's getting hard. It's getting it, hard. Yeah. It's getting hard. It's getting hard. <laughs> um, there was happier news. There was a relationship that broke up. Relationship that got back together. Maya Moore. You see this? Yes, I did. Shot. Congratulations to Maya Moore yeah. and Jonathan Irons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, so Maya Moore, who is one of the greatest basketball players of all time, uh, actually stopped her career some years ago to devote herself full time to getting a man out of prison. This man's name is Jonathan Irons. She took a break to help him get out. Um, He was convicted on burglary and assault charges, but Maya Moore worked with a lot of people. Uh, It's been very, it's a very, very insanely amazing story, right? And helped him get out of jail. And now they are married. There was a relationship, I guess, going on this entire time or... Third, I don't know if it was the entire time, but she met him when she was 18. Right. So that should be known. She's 31 years old now. So for 13 years, they've been, well, because she was in college for four years, you know, so she wasn't able to travel back to Missouri, which is where she's from. And that's where he was in prison. But 
they kept in contact for 13 years while he was behind. And he was behind bars, y'all, for 13 years during their entire... Uh, no, no, longer than that. Excuse me. He was behind bars longer than that, but the entire time of their relationship. Oh, um, Behind so it was, a, it was amazing when you first heard that Maya Moore actually stopped her career to dedicate herself full-time to getting this brother out of jail, uh, which she was able but to now, do. But it was even now, you kind of We get it. We get it. It wasn't that far-fetched now. It's love. Love makes you do, you know. Yeah. Love. Love. She's trying to, I mean, basically, you know what I'm saying? She's trying to bring it home. You know what I'm saying? Get, get the sausage back out in the free. You know what I'm saying? You want to bring it home? That now, here's the thing. Think about that. Could you ever fall in love, do you think, with a man that was imprisoned? I do, actually. Interesting. I, but it, it would depend on what he was convicted of. And like for, for her, she was fighting for his innocence. So she always believed he was innocent. He was a good man. He was 16. They tried him as an adult. They sentenced him to 50 years, y'all. First offense, burglary and an assault. He's uh, assaulted the homeowner, allegedly. And now we know that's not allegedly. It never happened. The, the conviction was overturned. But with a gun, he hit the homeowner. 50 years at 16. This is the kind of things that they're fighting for. I, I think if I had that exact same situation and I was 18 when I met this man and I heard his story and I knew he was a good man, I could easily see myself falling for this man. Now, I, don't, I said falling for him. I don't know if I could wait 13 years now. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that. She probably didn't have to wait the 13 years. Now, you think she probably didn't have to wait? She did. She was 18 when she met when she met him. I know, but she probably didn't. She probably had other relationships while he was inside, right? I don't know. I don't I don't think so. Because you there, think when that I, she, when I read, you think she put it on lockdown for 13? She she, 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 she was, was she was young. Listen, she was young at 18. You know, she might have like not had dated anybody, dead, focused on basketball having this relationship with him. You know, they were friendly at first. She said he was like family. And then somewhere along the lines, they developed feelings for each other. They said it happened a while back. Who knows how long? I don't know if I could wait 13 years. Couldn't wait the 13 years. Have you seen Legends of the Fall? Yes, of course. Of this one. Okay, okay, finally. I get to make a movie reference. Right. Yes, okay. of course. Susanna was her name, I believe. And you know she she went from brother to brother to brother, but it's a very good it's a very good movie. I'm not summarizing. No, 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 my no, no, point no. is when no, no, she no, falls no. for Tristan. Say it like the way she fucked the whole family. Okay, I don't like the That's way the that you say that because Legends it takes away from the essence she of the, the movie, which is absolutely beautiful. It's one of my she favorite movies. She fucked the whole family. <laughs> okay, not 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 Anthony Hopkins, not the dad. Not the dad could have though. We don't know. Here's the thing. No, and she never did with the younger brother. She never did with the younger brother. Wait, no, she did. Yes, she did. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. He oh, went to no, war. he died before he she had a chance yeah, to. Yeah, don't... Okay, but, but look, spoiler but alert. They, spoiler alert. That's, a, that's the whole movie is based off that. Like, look, spoiler you guys got to watch exactly. Legends of the Fall to know when not to bring your girl home. <laughs> to because so Because I'll tell you what. So I'll tell you something about Legends of the Fall real quick. So in Legends of the Fall, this is peak Brad Pitt with long-ass Oof, hair. Tristan. Tristan and like a his name. Tristan. Like a... Like a a hat, a Brad Pitt with like a native indigenous spirit. Yes. So Brad Pitt is all earthy and rugged and stuff like that. His brother comes home like, I got this beautiful woman who I think is played by that French Samuel. Uh, Susanna. Samuel is his brother. Yeah, Samuel brings home right. Susanna. Yeah, and so it brought Susanna home and immediately, you know, they Brad Pitt comes out and they're all horse player out. Ha ha, Samuel. And then he introduces her to him and obviously she looks at this guy and she's like, and there's something there automatically like why don't look, look if my brother is like is like let's let's say my brother was uh i don't know jesse williams let's say that was my brother you're never meeting my girl <laughs> because i'm not even gonna put her in a position where she has to choose if my brother is like a like a jesse williams give me somebody else like uh yaya from uh from uh, from watchmen you know big big, big uh you know one of those you know yeah 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 like big it's a big, tall brother from New Orleans from Watchmen, handsome brother. You know, you, don't, you mm. haven't seen him. No, let's just use Idris. I don't know who. I don't know who that is. Idris, fine. If if my brother is Idris, I might cut his face before you meet him. I might, <laughs> wow. I, 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 might I might, I might, I might maim him. But that's what happened. Maim. 
That's, that's what, what happened. happened. And then the older brother, Tristan, leaves. Right. So Tristan's wild. He's a wild spirit. And after Samuel dies, he's he's he he's the one who saw him. He died in his arms and he can't handle it. And he's he has to go away. And he ate his heart. This, this is getting back. Hmm? He ate his heart. He didn't There's eat a it. part in the Legends of the Fall. Oh, yeah. He they ate all it. go off to World War One. There's oh, yeah, a part in Legends of the Fall. But did they show him fucking, eating it? He ate his heart. Well, I know he skinned he skinned the other people and wore and wore their he- like their scalps. Cut his heart. No, he didn't eat the heart. He cut yeah, his heart out. He did a, he performed he a, a ritual. No, he, he performed the a Native American ritual. I promise you, in that because okay, they, they check, go to World War One. Did Samuel I mean, did Tristan eat the heart? I don't he know. He ate about the that. heart. I'm telling you, they went to World War One and one of the, all three brothers went to World War One. And then uh so all three brothers the, the older brother was wounded. And then, they, then Tristan was supposed to be watching over the younger brother. He didn't mm-hmm. watch over him. He goes out to fight. He gets killed. He find, he comes up upon him just as he gets killed. And he puts his knife in his heart. And he eats. And then later on, he unwraps the heart. And but he he's, you don't see him eat it. You just see him like blessing. It's like he's doing a, um, like a spiritual thing. Because that what he does ends up going back oh. to the other uh, Native, to American, the Native guy. American guy that he learned a lot of his you know, or whatever that ritual was, he learned it from him. Anyways, my whole point in bringing up Legends of the Fall is that Tristan goes away. And remember, we told you Susanna was in love with him. And she said, I'll wait forever for you. He's gone seven years. He gets it all out of his system. He comes back and she is now with the older brother. So this is how she works her way through it. And she turns to Tristan and, and it's something along the lines of Tristan said, I thought you'd wait forever. And she's like, well, forever turned out to be too long. That's how I would feel about them 13 years. That was, that was, that's the whole point I was trying to make while we went off on a Legends of the Fall tangent. It's such a good movie, you guys. You should see it. The cinematography is great. The, the acting is impeccable. Good. The storyline is wild. It's so good. It's definitely a good movie. I love how you saw that shit. I love how that's the shit that you watched. And they're like, you know what I mean? I'm like, I love how the, that's the shit that you watch, Legends of the Fall. Uh, yeah, but look, um, it's tough. Congratulations to them. I, I, it, it did my spirit well to see that, the shit that she's together. And also, to let people know that while you're fighting for a cause, it's not like your life has to stop. You know, your life doesn't stop while you're fighting for a cause. She was fighting for this brother to get out of jail. Sparks hit. I tell you what, it's going to be a lot of brothers that try to recreate this now. <laughs> a lot of people that's it, like, I'm telling you, Kim Kardashian trying to get all of these dudes out of prison. It's going to be a lot of brothers out there that are now going to think, hey, not only, because think about it. It's going to be a lot of, you know, Kim probably gets inundated with people trying to get her to get them out of. Now that's not all they're going to want. That's not all they're going to want. They're going to want to get out of jail and they're going to want to be on season 19 and keeping up with the Kardashians. Boy, that would be so crazy if Kim fell in love it's don't want to see any marriages break up. You, you watch that season. Love, You'd watch that season. I will watch that season if, 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 if like, all of a sudden, Kim is like, I, I think, yeah, Darrell. Darrell not didn't Darrell. do this, but not only did he not do this, he has a soft heart. And, like, she just, that would send Kanye over the edge, man. <laughs> Can I also just say that I don't want people to think that, if you're not familiar with Maya Moore, I don't want you to think that the reason that she was fighting for, no, not at all. um, for change in the system is because she fell in love with Jonathan Irons. That's not it. She continues to fight. They're actually doing this fight together now, fighting for other people. This isn't something like she fell in love and was fighting for this one man. She has dedicated her life to the cause. And so I just want that to be clear too, if you're not familiar with Maya Moore and everything that she's doing. Uh, I, there's a movie I need you to watch for me while we're talking uh, about movies. What? You have to watch it. It's called My Octopus Teacher. I'm not, absolutely not. Has anybody on <laughs> uh, Jordan, not. Jackson, Isaiah, has anybody seen this movie? No. They haven't seen it. I would like to <laughs> shout out somebody at this particular time. I'd like to shout out Amy Schumer. So uh, Amy Schumer put it up on Instagram. She said the, the name of the movie is My Octopus Teacher, right? She said this movie is really great. And um, I'm like, what the fuck is this? It looks like a fucking guy. It's a weird poster. Uh, and I, I commented. I was like, yo, what the fuck? And then she DM'd me. You know, and so she's like, yo, you have to watch this. Like, you have to watch this My Octopus Teacher thing. And it is about a guy in South Africa 
who develops a friendship with an octopus in the wild. I, I, it's getting worse, fan. From the title to the plot, I'm not, I'm not intrigued. You have never seen a story this beautiful before in your life. Okay? You haven't so, seen a story this beautiful before. But is it life. like castaway vibes where it's just like Tom Hanks just talking to Wilson because Wilson can't talk back? Like, I don't want to watch another movie like that. Nope. It is. So he dives. He's been diving his whole life. By the way, the aquatic life in South Africa is beautiful. It's beautifully shot. So he dives. He's been diving his whole life. One time he dives and he meets an octopus. Is this a it's true a story? Oct- it's a, it's all right there. Okay. It's, it's a documentary. Okay. So it's documented. Like he, he like cuddles the octopus and you watch the octopus's entire life. Okay. So he sees the octopus and at first he just starts noticing that the octopus is checking him out. Right. The octopus is watching him. The octopus is seeing him. And then all of a sudden he puts his camera down and he just like, so it can observe the octopus. And he notices that the octopus is interacting with the camera. It's super smart. So he comes back and he puts his hand out and you see first contact. <laughs> Get out of here, man. I'm not. <laughs> you, you're not believing me because you don't want to believe in love. This octopus movie. Love. Like, this is real animal to, like, man love. There are, this, they, this is a, you don't I, think I this don't is understand true. how this movie can, can, has growth. Like, how it moves. Okay, once first touch happens, then what? Like, a well, hug? After, a, a full-out hug? This they is, hug later on in the movie, You know what this is giving sure. me vibes of? What's that movie with old girl that falls in love with a, um, the alien thing? It won all the awards at the Oscars a couple of years ago. Oh, you're talking about uh, Benicio Del Toro movie, is The Shape of Water. This, this is giving me Shape of Water vibes. It's kind of like The Shape of Water all a little right, bit. but I don't need but to like, see but, it. <laughs> but, it's, but except it's real. So it also shows how he navigates the ecosystem because he goes and checks in on the octopus all the time, right? He dives down there. And you also get to see the life of the octopus and how amazing the animal is and like how cool they become and the octopus. Play. And then at the end, you know, the cycle of life that the octopus goes through, the movie I feel see, it's just like Charlotte's Web. It ends with... Oh, no, I can't watch that. It ends with, you know, the kind of the... the, 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 the uh, not to spoil for anybody, but the octopus fucking dies. He gets eaten by a shark. No! That's... <laughs> That's how he, <laughs> you made it seem like life just happened. He ran his course. Not that he was murdered. No, you, you're missing it though. You have to see it. So there's a part where there's a part where listen, you're, you're I'll not just getting fast it. forward to the end. So there's a part where not shark is chasing the octopus, right? And it's like all dramatic. And the octopus actually beats the shark, and he beats it by getting on the shark's back. Shark doesn't even know the octopus is on his back. Octopus kind of gets away, right? But later on, the octopus has to hatch eggs and lay eggs, right? It mates and then it lays eggs. And with this particular octopus, once it lays eggs, that's it. It's over. It dies. So it was it laid eggs and it was super weak. And then the shark came in. Baby, I'm telling them about the, the, the end of the, the octopus movie. You didn't finish it. The like the shark. So, the, the, so you're telling me she fell asleep. Because that's, yeah. that's how I'm feeling right now. Right. Like, like the shark comes in, the shark comes in and the shark grabs the octopus and goes away with it. And then it cuts back to the guy and he's crying. He's crying. He's talking about the lessons that he learned from the octopus. It's called My Octopus Teacher. Is it a real octopus? What are you talking about? What do you mean? This is a real question. Is it a real octopus or is this like animated? It's a documentary. It's a, yes. <laughs> it's a real octopus. So I asked you if this was a true story and you never gave me a yes or no answer. It's a, I said it's a documentary. It's like he, he's a, he's a photographer and a, and a filmer dude, like a, like an aquatic documentary. Why don't you say yes or no? It's a true story. My <laughs> octopus teacher. It's a true story. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring Amy Schumer on to the show. I, I, I've loved her. She's a big bachelor fan. Bring her on. I'm going to bring Amy Schumer onto the show. And Amy Schumer is going to talk about one of the most wondrous, one of the most wonderful, one of the most impactful movies I've seen in a long time. The name of the movie is My Octopus Teacher. Okay, so here's my question to you. You're giving it a lot of credit. So why was it so impactful and meaning to you? And what did you learn from the octopus? This guy who was going... The guy, the guy, this guy who was going through a tough time in his life, right? 
He was dealing with a whole bunch of things, couldn't really find himself again. He found himself again through, he was gonna, he was diving into the ocean. At first, he was finding himself through solitude because he said he likes to go into the ocean and it's super cold where the ocean is, where he's from. It made him feel alive and he starts craving the cold. But it was something that he would do all by himself. He wouldn't, uh, he, he would only dive alone. But after a while, he developed this kinship with the octopus, right? Okay. And so every time he would dive and go down there, he would be connecting with someone. Then at the end of the movie, when it shows him diving, he's diving with his son and like four other people because now he has learned how to reconnect with people because of his connection to the octopus. It is called My Octopus Teacher. It is a great movie. And I know, no, no, I know why you're being so skeptical. I don't know why you're being so skeptical of the octopus teacher. You know what's interesting about you is that you got married on The Bachelor and you won't want to believe that someone could form a connection with somebody in a very small amount of time. This isn't somebody, it's an octopus. What are you I know, talking I know, about? I, but it's, <laughs> but an octopus is a, it's a, it's a, you it's a lie. You it's, an, it's an intelligent, I'm starting to get, I'm, to be real with you, I'm starting to feel a little played by the way you're being skeptical. <laughs> I'm starting to feel a little played by the way you're reacting to where, this movie that I really touched it? me. Where could I watch it? My Octopus this? Teacher on Netflix. By the way, I should tell you right now, I'm going to look it up. My Octopus Teacher. I'm going to see, I'm going to guess it has 99% of people liked this movie. A and diver many, swims with an octopus that reviews? lives in a kelp floors off the coast of South Africa. My Octopus Teacher. Shit was amazing. Well, you guys, if uh, if you've seen it, DM us. Tell us about it. Try to get. I, I, I'm gonna try to watch it because I gotta see what you're talking about. I gotta be honest with you. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna come to y'all crib. We're gonna bring some wine. We're gonna come to y'all crib. I'm gonna bring Brian to play Coyote basketball with me. And after <laughs> we play Coyote basketball, we're gonna come back and we're gonna get into the my octopus teacher because I don't know. I don't understand why you can't just like you really were. It's it's an odd. It's an odd. It's an odd pairing. You know, man and octopus. It's just um, <laughs> I, didn't, I just I just I don't I, I can't see it. You know, I'm I'm very visual. I gotta see. I'm listening. I hear you, and I don't want to take away from your experience and what you felt when you watched this movie. You and Amy and the other people who gave it a 99 percent review. It's it's a it's an amazing movie. Amazing movie. Now. Uh, college football is coming all the way back. Uh, the SEC is starting next week. Big Ten, college yeah. football. What? Yeah. No, I mean, go ahead with, with the story. With the story? Why? <laughs> Are you laughing about... Because I just thought, do you think the Big Ten feels embarrassed? Like, at first, people were like, oh, man, you know, they were all, they were ahead of the game. They, they, they care about their players. They realize these, these, these are amateur athletes. And they don't get paid. And it's not great to put them in this type of situation. And then the Big 12 was like, we're playing football. SEC, yeah. we're going to play football. And they're kind of like, oh, well, we're just going to delay our season and we're going to go ahead and get on board, too. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's, it makes me laugh. So... For people that might not know that listen to the podcast, what Rachel's is talking about is exactly the way it happened. There's, <laughs> there's five power conferences. The Big Ten was the first power conference to say we're not going to play because of coronavirus test uh, the, because of cor the coronavirus pandemic. They want to put their athletes in harm's way. But now, you know, other conferences are playing football, and they've developed some rapid testing, which I guess wasn't around when the Big Ten made this decision. So. It's maybe a little bit safer. I don't know if it's a little bit safer. There was a college athlete not too long ago that passed away from coronavirus. So oh I don't gosh, know if it's safer. I didn't know that. There was, yeah, but it's working. Uh, it's working. So the Big Ten has now voted to play college football. Is the Big Ten right? Was the Big Ten right for postponing? Or was the Big 12? the SEC, and some of these other college football conferences. I mean, look, it seems like sports is getting back to normal. Quicker sports is adapting to this faster than, than, America. than America is. I mean, because there's money involved here, right? So it seems as if there's going to be a semi-normal college football season. Oh, is this, are, are we overlooking the safety of these athletes, though? That's a tough question to answer because, I mean, I was definitely one of the people that was commending the Big Ten. Um, and there was another conference that did it as well. But the, the Big Mac. Ten, 
the MAC, but the Big Ten is obviously, you know, bigger because it's got Ohio State and everything in it. But um, I was commending them for, you know, leading the charge and saying, you know what, we're going to sacrifice what it's a lot of money that they would be losing. But they were putting their athletes first. And despite, you know, athletes like big time athletes like Justin Fields pleading with them to open up the season, saying there was this petition going around saying that they wanted to play the game. They stood strong and said, nope, we're not going to do this. I thought that that was very big of them and something that we don't really see come out of the NCAA a lot. So I, I'm answering this in two parts because at the same time, if the Big 12, I know specifically, has taken these measures to do these rapid, the rapid testing and to protect the athletes, if they're protecting them as well with what they're doing, then I don't understand. Then I can see why the Big 10 would would jump on board. I just think it's funny how things have changed uh, from where they did. What when when did they make that announcement? Like a month ago? Well, months ago, a month ago, like two months ago, or something like that. I just want to say this: college athletes out there, be careful. I just want to make sure the college athletes. So know you don't that. agree with it? It's not that I don't agree. It's the only way things can go. Really, to be honest with you, like they Wait, weren't what, what going to. What do you mean to, by that? Uh, they weren't going to sacrifice their season. Like. So you think even if testing, they didn't have this enhanced testing, they'd still play? Somebody was going to play. Gotcha. Do you think that that's what pressured them? The fact that yes. other conferences were still not the testing, just that. Well, football still going on in parts of the country. Yeah, I think without a doubt. I think what the Big Ten needed, what the Big Ten wanted to do, they wanted to do this. And I think that their reasons were were sincere, but they thought that they would be a trailblazer and that everybody else would follow. And then there'd be some cachet for them to say, hey, we cared about our athletes when nobody else did. Well, mm -hmm. the other conference says, what we're going to say, what we're going to do is we're going to find a, uh, the safest way we can do this. Remains to be seen whether it's safe or not. Right. We're going to go ahead and go get that money. Here's the thing about the NCAA. It's a cartel. It's a cartel that trades in the talent and the abilities of mostly black bodies at the highest levels. So if you thought that at any point in mass that the NCAA was going to put the health of a bunch of young black athletes ahead of its bottom dollar, then you are crazy. I like football as much as the next person. I love LSU football. Love it. It was going to be a chore not to watch LSU this fall. But I would have done it happily. I would have done it happily if that meant that those young men didn't have to go out there and put themselves in harm way, harm's way. Now, there's a lot that we know about yeah. the virus now. and There's a lot that we know about the testing and the treatment now that we didn't two, even two months ago. We're learning more stuff by the day. So I understand that. but. I do think that it is a little bit ridiculous for the big for the Big Ten to come back now, like sort of after they've seen it. The whole thing was money. So if you're an athlete anywhere and you're listening to this, make sure that you're not doing anything that you don't want to do. If you think you can get drafted next spring and you don't have to, Jamar Chase from LSU, a couple of other guys, if you don't have to touch the field, then don't touch the field. Don't feel like you have, don't play for no city. Don't play for no college. Play for yourself because that's what the NCAA is going to do. Mm, They're in it for I themselves. Agree. Yeah. Um, before we get to mail back, because I know that we have an amended uh, sort of podcast here because of my tardiness. I'm sorry. Um, Breonna Taylor's family got a $12 million settlement from the city of Louisville. You're knee jerk when you heard that. I'm not mad that they got $12 million. I know there's was some controversy around it. I'm not mad that they got money. Um, but what I don't want and what I do see happen often is when a family does sue the city and the city pays out, everything stops. And so I don't want this to be a form of hush money. Take that money and use that money to fund you know, your, the pay for your attorney or whatever you need to do to fight for justice for Brianna. Even if that's, it's taking that money and put and spreading it around the world for other people who are experiencing exactly what you're going through right now. Let's take that money and use that money for the fight for justice. That's, that was my knee-jerk reaction. I don't see, have a problem with them taking the money. It just doesn't need to stop there. I don't have a problem with them taking the money either because it's punitive, right? It just, it's just, you know, 
I guess it it the city the the system has to pay for what the system did to a degree. So here's my issue with that, with all of that with with the money situation and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, so I'm of the belief the government actually puts a dollar amount on the the life of a human. Mm-hmm. The government does. I forget what the number is now, but there's actually a number amount that's assigned to a human life. The government puts a, a number on that. Uh, I'm of the belief that a human life is obviously priceless. You right. can't, like, you can't put a price tag on a hug, right? Like, think about what it means right now to like to 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 hug somebody that you love, or and what would you be willing? Right. You can't put a price tag on that, right? So you can't. There's no price tag for a hug or for a laugh or for a smile, mm-hmm. or or for watching somebody graduate. There's there's no way you can put a price tag on it. So and Breonna Taylor doesn't have that forever. That's over forever. Yeah. So un- everybody understand. When I say forever, I mean for eternity. No more Breonna Taylor. She's gone. So $12 million does nothing to go towards that. That mm-hmm. doesn't do anything. That, that means nothing. Um, and I'm sure if you ask Breonna Taylor's family, they'd rather have her than $100 million, than $200 right. million, than a billion dollars. They'd rather have her. So to me, the there's no justice that's, a, that's available. Shout out to Brooke Obi, who said this on Twitter as well. There's no justice that's available. You can't have justice for Breonna Taylor. She's dead, right? The only way that the city can make this right, and I know this seems like a cliche, is to do something to move us towards a situation where there won't be another Breonna Taylor. Exactly. Exactly. So that's the only thing that they can do. So the only thing that can be, that can even start to address this problem is systemic change, functional change that says to that community, we are not going to allow this to happen again. The only way to make something out of this entirely disgusting thing is to use it as a way to make people safer. And I don't see them wanting to do that. Well, they and, and, the, and And to be honest with you, if Brianna, if Brianna Taylor's family received twelve million dollars and then decided that they were going to go somewhere far, far away, where they, I couldn't blame them for that either because they're in pain. But, I, but no, no, I know, I know that they won't do that because they've been part of things. I know that they won't do that, but I wouldn't. So what I'm saying is, you know, like Jamel said, the taxpayers paid for that, that twelve million dollars. So I don't think it means anything. No, it doesn't mean a thing. I just don't want people to take, you know, like, oh, they're getting twelve million dollars, and as if it's the family's fault to ex- for accepting that. They better take. You're right. It doesn't. It doesn't even compare to Breonna Taylor no longer being with them. But they should take that money. But the fight shouldn't stop there. And I think that everybody's on the same page with that. And I think the family would say that same thing. It shouldn't stop there. And the pressure should still be on the city to make change. And for justice for what happened to Breonna Taylor. A change in justice in that case. And I want to also point out that the Daily, I mentioned this podcast before, they have a really good two-part Breonna Taylor podcast where if you, that really breaks down what happened and even has audio of people being interviewed and you understand the story because there are a lot of people who are against what's happening in Louisville and are spreading rumors as to the background of Breonna Taylor and her family. And they really do a good job of explaining things. They do a really good job of giving you the background so you can fully be knowledgeable about that as much as you can with the information that we're privy to about what happened, the events surrounding Breonna Taylor's murder. Mm, Love it, love it. Love it. Love it. I'm, 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 look, look, higher learning. We're here to make people smarter. And you can also make people smarter. You can make yourself smarter and better by making a nice, cuddly, aquatic friend. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't want Rachel to like make you guys think that if you're down there and you happen to make friends with a starfish or if you make friends with a, with a, like, I don't know, a sea lion or something like that, if that's your pal, don't, make, don't let Rachel make you feel like me and Rachel, we're about to get drunk. And we're going we're gonna to get wine drunk, drunk off wine, and we're going to watch my octopus teacher. We have time for one mailbag question. Jordan, whenever you're ready. Okay, we have a question. Rachel does a show on ghosting for MTV, and we heard her ghosting story. But Van, have you ever been ghosted? Yes. I can't believe I never asked you this question. I've been ghosted before. You've been ghosted? 
Yeah, I've been ghosted. I was ghosted in Brazil. Wait, okay, this, I knew you would have some crazy story if you ever were ghosted. How? Why? What happened? Okay, so, went to Brazil. Uh, <laughs> so, this, this is, there's a full story here. Do you want the full story? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, went to Brazil. All right? Went to Brazil uh, with my brother. 99. Okay, circa 99. 1999, okay. First time in Brazil? First time in Brazil. First time in Brazil. All right. We're down there and we're in, we're in Copacabana. We're doing our thing. You know what I mean? You know, doing our thing. <laughs> and uh, we meet these girls, you know, and we meet these girls down there and we're hanging out with them like five days the whole night. They would meet these girls in a strip club, I should say. We go to okay, a strip yeah, club. That, that's, a big, that's a big part. Yeah, we will go to a strip club. We meet these girls, right? So we meet these girls in a strip club and, you know, we're having a great time. We're spending money, blah, 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 blah. Down in Brazil, if you're a black American brother, you get some love, you know what I'm saying? So we're down there, we're having a great time. And brother goes, hey, you know, they want to come back, come back with us. And I'm like, what? Because, you know, these are Brazilian women. They were just, they were something different that I'd never seen before. Not better than the ladies where I'm from, but just different. You know what I mean? So I was going crazy, you know? Um... So, you know, I'm down there, we leave. And so for four or five days, we're hanging out, me and this girl. She doesn't really speak very much English, and I don't speak any Portuguese. But we're, we're going to the beach, like we're doing all kinds oh, wait, of stuff. Oh, wait, this is like days. I thought this was just a night. Okay. No, no, oh, no, okay, no, okay. no, no, this is days. This is days just hanging out. They, they were back with us. We were going E, we were dancing, doing the whole thing. We got robbed together down there, the four Stop. of us. Uh, <laughs> it was like the, 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 the whole nine is, is fantastic, right? So we're all doing our thing. We're, we're having fun. And, uh, you know, she gives me all of her information and stuff like that. And one day I wake up. One day I wake up and they are gone. And they, they left, both girls. And my uh, my brother is, is coming out. He's like, yeah, just put them in a taxi. They're gone. What Was your wallet there? Was, my wallet was there. Was your, was your jewelry Everything there? Everything was there. Okay. You, know, my brother, you know what my brother told me? What? He said, I paid them and they left. <laughs> That's not a ghosty story. That is a ghosty story. Do you know why? They were, I didn't know that they were prostitutes. <laughs> like, I, 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 I didn't know. That's not. So what happened was I had her information and I had tried to call for the whole. I was in you love. You had her information. I, I was in love. I'll be honest with you. I did something toxic. I went back to the club <gasps> looking for her. I was in love. I, I Literally, I was thinking, you know what? I wonder if I can come down here every summer and just kick it or like what it would take to get her to get her to America or blah, 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 blah. Never heard, nothing was answered. Never heard from her again. Never talked to her again. And by the way, this entire time, they sold it. I thought we were going to, I really was thinking, yo, should I transfer to, and do college in They're South America? They're professionals. They're professionals. Yeah, I'm like, I'll, I'll yeah. come down here and I'll sell Brazilian beef by the beach. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll open up my own Fogo de Chao. Like, I'll change. I can change for you. I'll change is what I was thinking. This sounds 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, Go it ahead. Was de- definitely. We was out there just chilling, man, the whole nine. Never heard from her again. Completely <laughs> ghosted. Talked to her. She disappeared. Like, they're, like, never heard from her again. Like, really never. And really took me like a year and a half to, like, get over it, really. I was kind of like, damn. You know, it was my first time really being out of the country like that. Damn, it was ghosting me. Ghosted. This might be one of the best ghosting stories I've ever heard. I don't know if it qualifies, but it might be one of the best ones. Why is it not ghosted? She definitely ghosted. You were with prostitutes. So what? She was just, she was just simply doing her job. Well, maybe it's their clock. job to ghost. Maybe we should look into that. Is that toxic? I support sex workers, but is it toxic to just ghost a good customer, which is what we had been up to? I didn't pay, but my brother did. So I like, you know what I mean? So, and so I don't know, maybe he didn't pay enough. I don't know what happened, but she ghosted. I, I felt like I at least deserved an explanation because I thought I thought I had got to her, 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 
her creamy You thought center. you could change her. You thought I you thought could I change her. I thought I could change her. I thought I could change I don't want to change her. I'd have been there. She could have been real with me. At that point in life, she could have been real with me. She could be like, look, just let you know, if you're coming down here to be with me, this is what I do for a living. I'd have been, okay, be safe. Be safe. Other no, because you know how the story goes. Eventually, you would have said, you don't have to work like that anymore. C- come back to the States with me. I'll take care of you. I'll give you a good... Don't make a face like that. You were sprung. Go back to your 19-year self. Don't try to... 19-year-old self. Don't try to be cool about That's it. That's not me. That's not me. I don't care about them. I care about me. Go out there and make your money. Come back home to daddy. We're good. I'm, I, I'm getting upset <laughs> okay, thinking about stop. it now. Getting upset thinking about it now. But that's the only time I, that, that I was ghosted then. You know? So, uh, look, it's now time for Unexpected Ally of the Week. And mine is obvious. My Unexpected Ally av- is Amy Schumer. <laughs> you got... Did the octopus have a name? I don't think... No, the octopus didn't have a name. He just called her See? she. It was a lady octopus. You know, but he was cradling the octopus. He was like... He, like he Are was, they not big? No, it was a pretty big... It wasn't that big. It was... A, I, I, was like, I would say probably like this big. It, was a, it would swim and it would change colors. It could change colors and it would ink. It, it was, it's an amazing animal. There's, a, there's something creepy to me about him, but okay. No. Amy Schumer, I'll never eat calamari again because I watched well, this my octopus squid. teacher. Is it, it's not the same thing? Mm-mm. Squid. Have you never had octopus? No, I've never oh, eaten octopus. Oh, there's definitely a difference. Is it good? Is octopus good? It is good. It just depends how it's cooked. Mm. Nah, I don't it's like when people say that. It's more octopusy. When, 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 uh, it's a little octopusy. Hey! Tastes a little fishy sometimes, huh? Because, you know, you got to worry about you know that what? octopusy sometimes. Let me go sometimes. ahead and get to my unexpected Sometimes it tastes a little fishy. Yeah, it depends on, you know, octopus hygiene and things like that. Anyway, so uh, what, what, were you, what, what are you getting ready? What's your, who's your unexpected ally of the week? Paid Manning. Oh, yeah. Did amazing. you see this? Yeah. HBCUs. Kate Manning honors prestigious, prestigious alums with scholarship endowments at six HBCUs. I don't know if you guys saw the story, but <clears throat> the I, I, I don't know who all they were named after. I'm looking at the article now, but I know that Gr- the Gram- Gramlin State alum, Doug Williams, your family friend. Learned that an anonymous found, uh, foundation endowed a scholarship in his name at his alma mater, Grambling State. And turns out that came from Peyton Manning. And apparently he did that at five other HBCUs. Where the five? Southern. Okay, I was about to say. Tennessee State. For Southern, he did it for Harold Carmichael. Tennessee State for Wilma Rudolph. Fisk University, Dr. Revis L. Mitchell Jr., Xavier University in Louisiana, Dr. Norman, Fre- Norman Fre- Francis, can't read, and Dillard University, Dr. Michael Lomax. Ooh, shout out to the ladies down there at Dillard, man. Yikes. Okay. Anyway, I thought that was beautiful. What a random, what a, we, we've talked about endowments and, and HBCUs not having these great large endowments. And I thought that was great that Peyton Manning did that and he did it in honor of uh, people as well. So that that's actually uh, a, a gigantic part of it, you know? He took mm-hmm. time to educate himself a little bit about some people that had made those. So, so that's that's peak allyship right there, you know, for somebody like Peyton Manning, who did it, but also took the time to recognize people that were involved in all of those universities. So good, good on Peyton Manning. I still, that's great, but okay. he didn't show me how to how, tr- what true love is this week. The only person that did that was Amy Schumer as far as the octopus teacher is concerned. So we're going to bring Amy Schumer on here. Uh, hopefully we're going to get her and we're going to talk about it because, you, you know, shout out to helping out Southern University. But what they really need to do is get a fish tank wow. down to Southern. Y'all see that Southern University? What's y'all's mascot? The Jaguars. Jaguars. Y'all hear that fellow Jaguars? He yeah. put the octopus over you guys. As proud as you are of Southern University what I did. and what I and the school that. you came from in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, you watch one movie with an octopus and that went, what? The octopus needs to be at Southern. We need a big ass tank so that we can come and see. Because really, really, to be honest with you, the octopus really showed me that here, every time I think that we have to be separated and segregated and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. I see something that reminds me that we can all work together. If man can commune with octopus, then communing... No, that's actually not true. The octopus is probably not nicer, a lot nicer. (laughs) The octopus, because the octopus didn't have transatlantic slavery. 
The octopus, the you octopus know what had I feel like? I feel like you had nobody else to talk about this with other than Amy Schumer. So you tried to bring this onto the podcast and thought maybe you could gather more people who would be interested in it, and you failed. I don't understand what the deal is. Look, my octopus teacher is the name of the movie. Go Y'all watch check it out. the movie. My name is nowhere in the credits. I cried over the octopus movie. I did. I cried. I cried over the octopus movie. All right. Uh, oh, by the way, like, like you are, are you going to continue to do the podcast like all done up in your like ghosted extra face and stuff like that? Are you going to do that? Um, uh, probably. I'll probably end it. Why? Do you? Because then, you nigga, step I'm gonna start. Nah, I'm gonna start fucking stepping it up then. I'm I've already been inquiring. I want you to know I've already been inquiring about where to get a man wig in LA. Okay. I haven't found anybody to do it yet. So I think that would be your glow up. I'm with it. I'm yeah, with yeah. it. Killmonger style. All right, guys. I am dripping wet with sweat from playing Coyote basketball. That is the end of higher learning. Take your thing caps off, but do not stop learning. I am Van Lathan. And I am Rachel Lindsay. 